This was an interdisciplinary project that I did with a sixth grade science teacher and a technology teacher. In sixth grade, the next generation science standards dictate that the students learn all about the solar system, the planets, the distance of the planets from the sun, the chemical makeup of the planets, etc. And we decided that art was a perfect vehicle for enabling students to understand these ideas. I'm going to include links to the um, relevant uh, next generation science standards, but I just want to read to them from them now. Um, they're expected to develop and use a model to describe the solar system. Um, examples can include physical, such as the analogy of the distance along a football field, or computer visualizations of elliptical orbits, or conceptual, such as mathematical proportions relative to the size or familiarity of objects such as a student's school or state. Also supposed to be able to analyze and interpret data to determine the scale and properties of objects in the solar system. As in the next generation science standards, that examples of data include statistical information, drawings, photographs, and models. We decided that the creation of these models and the use of them to calculate the distance of the various planets from the sun would be a perfect way to incorporate art into the science lesson. Students could use art to create these visual models, which would then, in turn, help them understand these abstract concepts. We had access to iPads, and we used a couple of really great iPad apps. The first app that we used was SolarWalk. SolarWalk contained all the information that students needed about every planet in the galaxy, and especially in our solar system. It also included um, beautiful photographs and uh, visualizations of the various planets. The other wonderful astronomy app we used was Starwalk. Starwalk allows you to see what's happening in the night sky in actual real time. It's like being at the top of the astronomy tower at Hogwarts. You can just look up in the sky and wherever you turn the app will show you all the heavenly bodies that are out there. The stars, the planets, the constellations. Um, if you look down, it would show you all the stars that are in the southern hemisphere if Earth wasn't in the way. And it calculates this information based on your current location on Earth. We also found a website that gave us the colors of the various planets and why they were that color. In other words, what elements, metals, and properties were on those planets that gave them their specific color. Was it the actual planet themselves? Was it the atmosphere? And what chemicals create what colors in nature? Um, and I will include the link to that website in my, uh, in my packet. Our first plan of action was to have the students uh, get together and create models of every planet in the solar system and a model of the sun and then they were going to use these models in order to calculate the distance of each planet from the sun and to create an actual physical model to show the, the relative size of the solar system. To create the planet models, we used two iPad apps. The first one was called Sketchbook Pro, and the second one was called PS or Photoshop Touch. And don't worry for what you're about to see, all the steps, um, I have provided worksheets and, and handouts for you. Um, today we're going to be making planets um, and then saving them to a Dropbox to be used in a later lesson on the solar system. The first thing you need to do is you need to go to your home screen and you need to find the app Sketchbook Pro. Once you've found Sketchbook Pro, you open it and you go to the very bottom. You're going to hit the plus sign and that will open up a new document and you want the one with the highest resolution and fewest number of layers, the one with the four next to it. So you click that, you're going to go to the very top to the paintbrush, touch it and that'll give you a drop down tool menu and you want to pick the widest brush possible. In this case I'm doing earth so I'm going to pick the colors that I want for earth and the brushes that I think will look nice to make planet earth so I'm going to pick a blue and then a green and I'm just going to scribble scrabble from left to right 
and then I'm going to smear them using the smudge tool. Here, I'll show you what the smudge tool looks like. That's the smudge tool. It's You scroll down, it's like on the fourth uh, menu for the brushes. So I pick this, the smudge tool and you can fix the radius, make it wider. So here I am uh, taking the green and the blue and smudging them together. When I'm done with that, uh, here I'm going to just sort of add swirls. I can change the radius of the smudge tool, make thin or thick swirls. Um, when I'm done with that, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to enlarge it so it takes up the entire page. So I need to go to the upper right hand, uh, those three dots, and touch that. That'll give you a drop down menu. Hit transform. And what I'm going to do to transform it is I'm going to click on the scale. It says scale layer. Um, that symbol and that gives you sort of a pin that you put in the middle and you pull out the corner and you can enlarge it So it takes up the entire page now I'm going to the layer menu in the upper right hand corner and what I'm going to do is I'm going to Touch the layer menu and hit cut and that cuts What I just did out of sketchbook pro, but don't worry. It's on a clipboard now I'm going to go to my main menu again, and I'm going to open up the app PS touch and I'm going to go to the very bottom I'm going to hit the plus sign and I'm going to open up a new blank project. And you hit OK, and then you're going to go to the very top, and you're going to find the pencil icon and hit uh, touch that. It'll give you a drop-down menu, and you're going to touch the word paste. And that will paste everything you did in Sketchbook Pro into PS Touch. Then you're going to use that little round arrow icon to rotate your document and you're going to pull out the corner to make it larger. Once it's filled up the whole page you hit the check mark and then you're going to go to the very top, hit that ampersand at the top and hit warp. Now what you're going to do is you want to warp your document by pulling it in different directions uh, to make it look rounder, more like a planet. Then you hit the check mark, you're going to go to the upper left hand corner should be a tool menu. You touch it and it'll drop down and what you're going to do is you're going to pick the selection tool. If it's a box, touch the bottom right hand corner of it. There should be a little arrow and select instead the circle selection tool. Once you have the circle selection tool, you're just going to drag your finger across the document to select the circle. You see that circle? And the nice thing is you can actually drag that circle around to make it in, put it in the most interesting part of your um, design. Go to the selection menu at the top, touch it, there'll be a drop down menu, and you're going to hit inverse. So instead of the circle being selected, everything outside the circle is selected. Now you're going to go to the little pencil icon, and you're going to touch that, and you're going to hit cut. And that will cut away everything except your circle. Now you need to go back to the selection menu, which is right next to the pencil. You touch that, when the drop down menu comes down, you're going to hit deselect. Now you need to add another layer, your layer for your background. So you hit the plus sign in the bottom right hand corner and you're going to hit a make a blank layer. Make sure that layer is now in back of, you're going to slide it down in back of your circle. Now in this layer, which is now in back of your planet layer, you're going to make a background um, by choosing the gradient tool. Where you find your gradient tool is in the top if you hit that little ampersand symbol, one of the choices will be gradient in the drop down menu. So you see it gradient. And gradient is a lot of fun. You can really play around with it. There's a lot of tools at the bottom that you can mess around with. Um, you can take those little dots and pull them out and adjust the gradient. You can change the color from dark to light. So play around with the different tools there and have some fun with it, making it darker, lighter. Um, and uh, basically you're going to play around with the gradient, make your background. When you're done, hit the blue check mark in the bottom right hand corner. So now you're going to get off of the gradient layer and into the planet layer. So now that you're in the planet layer, you're going to hit the FX or FX menu. And uh, you're going to select lighting. Um, once you're in the lighting, you can really play around with that too. Um, just make sure that the lighting of the planet corresponds to the light and dark gradient of the background so they match up with each other. And you can just um, pull the little light bulb around. You can change uh, how wide it is. Um, you have a whole bunch of different choices here. Um, there's different types of lighting. 
There's the point lighting, but there's also spot lighting, which is great if you're making a planet that's eclipsing. Here's what my finished planet looks like, so I'm ready to save it. If you go to the upper left-hand corner, you'll find a little arrow. You touch that arrow, and then you're going to click either save or don't save. Touch the arrow in the upper left-hand corner, and then hit save. Now this is going to save it to the PS Touch app. It's not going to save it to your camera roll. In order to save it to your camera roll, um, you're going to have to go to the top of the screen and touch the arrow shown here and then hit save to camera roll. Then you're going to have to go to the document that you're saving, touch that, and a blue box will appear around it. And now you have to go to the bottom of the screen It'll say save to camera roll as a JPEG, you hit OK. So here is my planet saved to the camera roll as a JPEG. Not done yet, I've got to go back to Sketchbook Pro. When I hit that app, I should actually end up in the same document I had before. I'm going to go to my layer menu. I'm going to hit the plus sign with the flower. And I'm going to go into my photo library. I'm going to find that document. I'm going to touch it and it'll appear in Sketchbook Pro. Now I want to add some lettering. So I'm going to touch those three dots at the top, and I'm going to select text, and that will allow me to add some lettering to my document. Um, so I've made planet Earth, so the words that I want to put in here are the words Earth. If I touch that letter at the bottom, I can select the text that I want, and now that I've selected the text, I can select the color that I want, and then if you hit on the keyboard those two uh, capitalization arrows, but on both sides, it'll give you all caps. So I'm typing in the word Earth, and now I want to change the size of it so that it's larger, and I want to position it. So you're going to use the menu at the top to make enlarge it and then position it. Um, once you have it exactly where you want it, you hit Done, and then you go to the upper left-hand corner. You're going to touch those four boxes at the top, and you're going to select Save. Now, this saves it to Sketchbook Pro, but it does not save it to the Dropbox. In order to save it to the Dropbox, I'm going to have to touch uh, the, the icon for the document that I just made, and I'm going to have to hit the arrow with the flower on it at the bottom of the, uh, bottom of the screen, and I'm going to select Dropbox. Once you've selected Dropbox, you're going to choose uh, to save it as a flattened document. Um, and what you're going to do then is you need to select the orientation, so make sure it's facing right side up. And then you're going to have to name the document. You're going to name it with your team number, your last name, your first name, and the name of the planet. And then you hit Export. And that is how you create a planet using PS Touch and Sketchbook Pro. After the students created these beautiful planet models, they filled out an information sheet um, and used that information, um, which they got from the iPad apps, in order to actually use toilet paper to calculate each planet's distance from the sun and get a visual idea of just how far each planet is from the sun. This worksheet will be included in your handout packet. Okay, here we have Mercury. Uh, Giovanni, how many squares of toilet paper did you need to get Mercury away from the sun? How many? Half a square? Okay. And let's see, we got Venus. Who did Venus? How many squares? Um, a little bit more than one. Okay. And Earth, who did Earth? You did? And how many squares? One and a half. One and a half squares? Okay. Um. Who did Mars? You did Mars? How many squares? Two and a half. Two and a half? Uh, let's see, Jupiter. Who did Jupiter? You did? How many squares? Okay, great. Uh, let's see, Saturn. Ooh, way back, back here. Let's see, Saturn. Who did Saturn? How many squares? Fourteen. Fourteen squares. Okay, and then we got Uranus. Let's see. Okay. There's Uranus. Okay, and how many squares? 30. 30. Wow. Okay, and the last one. Neptune. Way out here. Who did Neptune? 
Scania, how many squares of, of toilet paper did you need for Nepto? 45. 45. So this is our model of the solar system, and you can see how close the inner planets are to each other and how far the outer planets are from the sun. Thank you very much.